Chapter 30, The Angelica Touch by L.J. Sedgwick. Chris nabs me as I come in from school, loaded down with homework, including algebra, the only part of maths that actively hates me. I need your help, he says. I ha- This idea I have, and your mum's on board. Well, sort of, but here's the thing. I need to compile a festival package that she can't resist. He's holding a sheaf of pages covered in half-human scribbles and small stick figures. Oh, and some small whales blowing heart bubbles. Can you take a look? I mean, you're brilliant with words and you do have a gift for matchmaking. His ears go red. It's to help the hotel. I take the pages. Well, I owe him for not telling mum about me getting detention. See, we talked about this festival yesterday, your mum and I, and she was all up for it and then she got mad. She does get mad sometimes, I've no idea why. Maybe because you kissed Kitty, says I? Oh, you overheard. The whole hotel overheard, says I. Kitty thought your mum needed to see what it looks like when you're enjoying a kiss. Yeah, I know, I thought it was odd too, but she's pretty persuasive. And she made it sound sort of clinical. Do you, mum? Do you know? Your mum said it's nine years since she kissed a man. Too much information, Chris. You know better than to talk to me about mum. Okay, so just have a look at what I've done. And I swear I'll never mention mum and kissing in the same breath again. Promise, says I. Yeah, on the dying breath of an albatross. Weird. But okay. Single and mad about film. Come and meet your soulmate at Drish Oak's Love Fest. April 22nd to 25th, 2010. Stay at the Victorian Drish Oak Arms Hotel, elegantly poised on the edge of the Atlantic. 65 euro per person sharing. Includes ticket to soulmate's ball. That's the pitch intro thingy, he says. Sounds good. Not too over the top. Possibly a bit specific. Ah, but that's part of my cunning plan, to target various groups, starting with one your mum's interested in, to pique her interest. I thought you said she agreed to it. In principle, he says, it's a blip. She will, oh, she absolutely will, provided it's spectacular. He grins and heads off with a bounce in a step. Oh, and Angelica, what? It is going to be spectacular. The bay window near the snack machine in the lounge has become the unofficial headquarters of our festival think tank. Chris has some really good ideas, like online vouchers people can print off and redeem against events in the festival, accommodation or food. He's getting pricings for a marquee to run additional events in, like a craft fair or a food market, an outdoor cinema in the far field and insurance. I've helped him pull together an information leaflet that he's going to deliver and post up around town. He calls on the citizens of Dushow, young and old, to come to a public meeting at 7pm in the community centre on Thursday next. The date he's pitching for the Love Fest is only two months away. You'll need a website ready to go when you get the green light, I say. Good idea. Can you check prices with Simon, he says. Do it yourself, says Simon. You're well able. He's trying to make a little rabbit on the crema of the coffee. It's his third attempt. Rabbits are Oni's favourite animal. Apparently he had a pet rabbit in Finland, one that answered to his name and shared his sofa. I'll give you access to the the software you need, he says. Okay. So Simon has decided he's mentoring me, which is another way of saying I'm his unpaid slave. The last one probably died of coffee poisoning. His coffee is seriously good now. Everyone's going around town on a caffeine high and the cafe is busy, busy, busy. Chris wants us, uh, Simon wants us to nominate him for Entrepreneur of the Year, but since technically RomanticHearts.com was my idea and it's anonymous, it's a long shot. I show him how to do the rabbit. And when his version is looking like a small ogre with long ears, I start work on the website for Chris's festival. It's nice to be working on something that isn't a secret or isn't totally. As well as a chat room and Chris's section for vouchers, I add romance, heartstrings and wispy angel wings. Everything I had to leave out for my own sight because I had Grace and Simon looking over my shoulder. I've added optional panels for music, myth and ritual, history, walking tours, blind date events, films, a mind and spirit fair, workshops on everything from aphrodisiacs to pottery and candles. I've managed to find some way to incorporate every business in town. Can't have anyone having an excuse not to be involved. This is amazing, says Chris when I show him it. It's only a rough, says I, feeling chuffed, and I might have gone a bit overboard. 
we can't use it until the festivals are go. So I set up a blog people can contribute to when you're getting suggestions and want to get the word out locally. Where did you learn to do this? School. So so when are you showing mum? I had to distract him from asking any more awkward questions. When it's ready, he says. He has this idea that it has to look all professional and with lots of people already behind it so she can't say no. It's not a great time anyway. She's like a bag full of puffies over her upcoming date with Carl. They exchanged one email before she said they should meet. I think she was afraid she'd lose her nerve. The highlight of the festival is spread across the top banner. The Love Fest Ball in the Drishog Arms Ballroom. I'm tweaking it again when I hear, am I invited? Dylan, he looks gorgeous. He looks tall. What can I say? Of course. Dylan and I celebrate with a hot chocolate in Simon's Cafe. Any day now he can ask me out and I'll say yes. I have a good feeling about Carl. I mean, I can match make anyone, everyone else. Why would it be difficult to do for one? To be continued.